These past few weeks since Atlanta have been a roller coaster ride for me because while I've been living with this new fear of being attacked for being an Asian American, I've also, also felt somewhat alone realizing that some of my friends and colleagues, including Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, are not really conscious about the magnitude of what happened in Atlanta. And I'm proud and grateful that the Girl Scouts of Greater New York is holding space for girls to talk about their experiences of being Asian American and Pacific Islanders and Desi Americans and their fears of being targeted in acts of hate and violence. We've been hearing a lot about the increased reports of hate crimes against the Asian American Pacific Islander community. Um, these have ranged from verbal attacks and shoving in our New York City streets to, um, as Patrice had mentioned, the shooting in Atlanta that took eight lives, six of them being Asian women. So our question now is it about safety. How safe do you feel? And um, how has hearing about the increased hate crimes uh, made you feel in your own community? Um, personally, for me, I'm on a college campus. And so it, a lot of the times you do walk around alone. Um, you don't have a car, you don't really drive yourself anywhere. And so the fact that you have to go around a lot, oftentimes by yourself is um, something that I was never really aware of until these incidents all occurred. And then I was very aware that I was walking around at night or walking around by myself. And so now the way that I kind of approach it is to make sure that I do have someone with me or to make sure that someone knows where I'm going. But I think that something that was also really helpful was the fact that friends here would also reach out and say, do you want to walk to this place together? We're going together, we can meet up. Um, and the fact that other people are also really cognizant of the fact that safety is a big priority is something that I've also really valued um, since being here on campus. I have two like experiences that I remember like vividly and they all happened um, a few years ago while I was in middle school and elementary school. So the first one that happened was actually with one of my like close friends and it was after like a test that we had and I got it like I think it was like high 90s score and then and I, she was like she didn't get like a, as a high score and then she was just like oh um you only got like a good grade because you're Asian because you're smart and you're Asian and it was just really like at the time I didn't feel like it was like racism I sort of like took it almost as like a compliment but now looking back it's like why would like my race have anything to do with like my accomplishments and it's like um it was something that really stuck to me because it was almost like invalidating like my accomplishments and my like um my hard work that I put in and just like saying oh it was because like it was your race I was actually involved with my school's geography B, and I have heard before you only won because you're Asian. Like it's just in your blood to win these sorts of things because you're an Indian American. And I think like Joy said, it's really invalidating and it also feels like we're being held to a higher standard, which is so unfair because the Asian American community is not a monolith. Everyone is different and everyone's accomplishments are not based off of their race. When I was in elementary school, it was like really difficult for me to bring like traditional foods to eat um, in the cafeteria because other people would, you know, look at me funny or make fun of what I was eating. So over time, I would just buy lunch from um, the cafeteria because I was afraid that other people would judge me and think of me as a weird person because I was eating food that my uh, culture and my people eat. I remember when we were little, we'd play like hand games and like handshakes. And there'd always be like this one where you say like Chinese, Japanese, Indian chief, and people would like pull back their eyes and like slant them differently based off of the certain race. And whenever I was little, I was like, this this is weird. Like I, I know like my eyes are different than like maybe my white classmates and things like that. And like, I didn't know how to say, what to say, how to react, things like that. And now when I look back on it, it was definitely like one of the first forms of casual racism that I ever experienced. And 
never knew how to stand up for it. What I learned about the model minority myth has really made me question, I guess, my own identity and what I've heard all my life, because really it was the government sort of during, especially during the Cold War, when they wanted to present America as a very multicultural society where people could achieve the American dream. Unfortunately, Asian American communities were really taken advantage of and presented to the world as, look, they're model minorities, um, they're proof of the American dream. And I think that unfortunately, that idea has been really ingrained into our society. And so it makes me wonder, looking back on it, when like Joy said, when like I would get like a high test score or something, when people had the reaction like, of course you got a high test score, instead of, oh, like, wow, you got a high test score or something like that. I think it really shows the assumption that Asians are overachievers. And I think it really shows that while people might think of, oh, you're smart as being a compliment, I think it just shows that there's, people just view Asian Americans with one lens and really Asian Americans aren't as free to express their individuality. I used to measure my self-worth on how much I could shed my Burmese-ness, my Asian Americanness, I mean, my Asian-ness and, and strive for, for whiteness to fit in. Um, for years, I felt that the, the white American um, culture was more dominant than my own culture, my own Burmese American culture. Um, but I learned through therapy and through talking to um, friends and loved ones and connecting with people that two things can, can exist and be true at the same time, um, equally Burmese as I am American. I can proudly like show my friends like Chinese American food and have them celebrate Chinese New Year here while like I'm at college or something. And so I think that like huge change is something that I grew, grew into and like grew into myself, but I hope that in the future, people really start to realize that at, at a younger age, like Kate said, like maybe bringing that food to school, you're like, you should be proud of it when you're in elementary school and it shouldn't take like 20 years of life, just like realize that you can balance both of them. Coming from like a family of immigrants, the idea that you need to assimilate has really been prevalent. And I think that as a South Asian, I often feel like I'm not really part of the Asian community, also probably because people think of the Asian American community as a monolith. And as a South Asian American, I've also sort of felt like, well, I'm not American. And so I think there's, I'm, it's sort of like that in between of trying, I guess, to figure out who you are in the Asian American community, but also, especially after things like being scapegoated for all sorts of things um, from terrorism to COVID-19 um, where, where how because the state of being American for Asian Americans, I think, is really fragile. And so how um, I fit into the overall American landscape as well. And you're right. This whole AA, I think we talked about yesterday about even the acronym of like AAPI and just being inclusive of, of 48 countries in Asia. You know, it's just so many, so many cultures. I mean, I'm from Burma. We have over 128 ethnic groups in Burma speaking different languages. It's so such a to, and to to put all of that as an Asian American AAPI bubble. Um, it's limiting, but but it does unite us. And then here we are talking about it. So. What are some ways that our community members can step up as allies for their AAPI friends? Definitely fixing our curriculum in schools is already a really important step because I know um, like even like in my world history and US history classes, topics surrounding Asian Americans is always something more thought of as an afterthought rather than something that's actually really important. Um, cause I remember like for my AP US history class, we spent maybe half, like five minutes on, um, the Chinese exclusion act. And there was like one page in the textbook about the internment camps, um, that the government, um, had put Japanese Americans in during World War II. And I just remember feeling very invalidated because there's 
so many struggles that Asian Americans have faced throughout like our entire U.S. history, I mean, although it hasn't been a long history, it's still significant. And I feel like definitely talking about these sort of things um, is really important and is a really important first step to educate our future generation. Something that I know I've been asked a lot over the past few months at this point is, you know, the rise in anti-Asian um, sentiment, where did it come from? But, you know, we know that it's definitely not new. As you'd mentioned, the Chinese Exclusion Act, um, I mean, that was in the 1880s, right? Um, it, it's something that's existed in our history, um, but it's not something that's talked about widely. And like you're saying, if it's something that's spoken about, um, we can, again, learn what happened then and, you know, grow from there. Up until this point, people really haven't recognized the fact that racism against Asians really is a problem. And I think that at least my community at my school, I know that I was one of the moderators for a town hall we had on um, hate against AAPI communities. And I think hearing other people's experiences, um, other Asians' experiences with racism, although it's awful, I think knowing that we aren't alone in our experiences and I think it really made an impact on my school as they saw that this was actually a really big problem. And so I think that obviously it's an issue we need to solve. And I think that hearing other people's experiences sort of taking us out of our isolation that we might've been feeling from like our fear and possibly pain from past experiences, um, hearing other people's experiences has been really healing. Culturally and historically, AAPIs have kept silent and just soldiered on um, so that the hate and discrimination that we've experienced as a community has often been invisible because we have not spoken about it. So being seen and heard and supported by allies and Girl Scout sisters means the world to me and I know to other AAPIs, especially the girls that we serve. I am Indian American and Girl Scouts has actually um, been a great outlet for me to connect to my heritage, um, which is why Girl Scouts, one of the many reasons why Girl Scouts has been such an amazing experience for me. I think it's great how we kind of all say like our country and where we're from, but at the end of the day, we can all kind of celebrate those differences in like Asian communities and also have these open conversations and talk about these really important issues and not kind of like shy away and be quiet or like um, kind of like sit down and like not say anything. And so I'm just really proud that we kind of do have these open conversations and we're really proud of where we come from.